This is the second year that I've hunted with primitive archery equipment that I've made entirely from natural materials. For this hunting season, I made a new yew wood long bow that measures 71 and a half inches long and pulls over 70 pounds. The knocks of this bow are made from the teeth of a mountain lion and are wrapped with sinew. For the September archery season, I started out hunting the open grasslands of central Oregon. The wheat fields in this area attract large herds of elk and are home to a large population of mule deer. Several times I was able to stalk within bow range of deer, but these animals have an incredible ability to sense danger and I was not able to harvest an animal during this early archery season. I shared my hunt with a close friend who hunts with a modern compound bow. He had several opportunities to shoot deer, but ultimately was not able to fill his tag. This year I was able to draw a second tag that allows me to hunt black-tailed deer in the Willamette Valley. For the second season, I decided to use a Native American style arrow that was used by Ishi in Northern California. The fourth volume of the traditional Bowyer's Bible is one of the best references on how to make this style arrow. The chapter on Ishi's archery equipment was authored by Steve Alley. He is a talented artist, a master flint napper, and an expert on Native American bows and arrows. He has studied and reproduced Ishi's archery equipment and has successfully harvested a deer using the Nishi style bow and arrow. The main shaft of my Ishi arrow was made from ocean spray and fletched with the feathers of a Canada goose. The point I napped from obsidian I collected at Glass Buttes. To be legal in Oregon, the point must be at least 7 eighths of an inch wide and cannot have any barbed angles less than 90 degrees. The point was secured to the foreshaft with pine pitch glue and the point and foreshaft were reinforced with sinew. For this hunt, I found a tree located along a main trail and sat on one of the branches. It took over three days of patiently waiting before a deer finally showed up. So I just had a fork buck um, come behind the tree. I wasn't expecting him from that side. It was kind of an awkward angle, but it hit him right behind the shoulder and that obsidian head just buried deep. I saw it sticking out the far shoulder. Bubbles and blood were coming out the hole. So I shot that buck as he came from behind my tree about 20 yards. He went on a dead run through the side hill here. And after about 30 seconds, he stopped. Dead as can be, right? there between those trees. That arrow killed him so fast it was amazing. It's amazing just how deadly primitive archery equipment can be. As I approached the deer, vegetation on both sides of the trail were just covered in blood. I was surprised to find that my arrow was still completely intact and sticking out of both sides of the deer. It was also incredible to see that the arrowhead had not broken and was still as sharp as the day I made it. I've been fortunate enough to harvest many animals in my lifetime but this first primitive archery kill has far been the most satisfying and rewarding. For me, it's not the size of the antlers, but the amount of effort that went into harvesting the animal that makes it a true trophy.